this is Joy and I'm here to help you get started cutting with your Cricut Expression. I have seven fabulous tips, tools, and tricks to help make that cutting just oh so much easier. So it's going to cut like butter. So I hope you'll join me. Step one to getting some good cuts is being able to test your cuts first. And I use this paper from Georgia Pacific. I got it at Walmart. It's under, um, under $6 now. And this is awesome stuff. It shows me how big my piece is going to be. Sometimes if I need to space things out on a card, I like to cut it out instead of try to guesstimate. Even when I use my gypsy and stuff, I can see the size, but it's nothing like really laying it on the card to tell or the layout. So I use this as my scrap paper cutout. It's just cardstock, just white. There you go. Okay guys, my second tip has to do with the cardstock you use to cut out your die cuts with. I love coordinations. Every single time this stuff cuts well. Every time, every time, it's awesome. Um, you can find this at Joann's and Hobby Lobby and they often have it on sale at both those places. It also has inner cores that are, um, sometimes it's a lighter shade, um, then they also have like a black one called Black Magic and then when you sand it, it's got color inside and they have a like a chocolate brown one and that's called Chocolate Box. When you sand it, it's got color inside. It's so cool when you run it through the cuddle bag and then the sand. And so this stuff really rocks. So Coordinations Cardstock is my second tip. Okay, my third tip, can you see it? It's this little green spatula. It doesn't come in the Cricut kit. I don't know why, because it's awesome. $5, Walmart, the best $5 you're spent. Real skinny, you can slide and lift off pretty much anything you need to with this. So, highly, highly recommend the spatula. So, that's tip number three. Tip number four is all about the glue. What glue are you gonna use to stick down all these teeny tiny little pieces you cut out? this bad boy. This is called the Xyron X and it pretty much makes a sticker out of anything you put through this little top part and you pull it out the bottom and there you have your sticker. Perfect for all those little dots for the eyes, all little pieces to the Disney characters and whatnot. Now, only a downside, sometimes this little glue can, this little sticker paper can kind of add up and cost. So another choice, if you don't want to do that, although I highly recommend that, is this Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. Okay, when they say quick dry, not lying. Not a lot of time here to play kids, so be sure to put that stuff down pretty close to where you wanted it because it does not have a long lead time. Trust me, I've glued some things kind of bad. So that's my tip about glue, tip number four. Okay, tip number five has more to do with mats. If you have a brand new mat, that's the time to use your thick cardstock. If you use your thin cardstock, you're gonna be in deep dark trouble because it's not gonna to wanna to pull off here nicely, it's gonna rip, you're gonna be mad, it's gonna be bad. So use your real thick cardstock. It's really good to use a brand new mat with really intricate cuts, maybe chipboard, word book you might be cutting. That's a real good time to use a brand new mat. The kind of chewed on mat, a little more chewed on, that's an okay time to go ahead and use that thinner paper, pan or, uh, thinner pattern paper that you may have. That's the time to pull that bad boy out. Um, where you might not need as much sticky to keep it down because it's thinner. The other recommendation I have is to try to use the center of the mat. If you have been somebody who just cut out little pieces and parts and you're mostly in these quadrants, sticky something down here in the center and just bring your blade over and then you can use your mat even longer. So that's my mat tip. Okay, my last two tips have to do with the machine itself, so let's head over there. Okay, here we are at the machine. And tip number six is you really need a settings table. This is gonna really help you cut um, your things faster, better, quicker, because it tells what, what levels your blade speed and pressure need to be at based on what kind of paper you have. It's just a chart. I have it on my blog, obsessedwithscrapbooking.com, and it's under the segment that's called Cricut Machines. You can find it under that menu bar item. And you can go ahead and download it, it's free, no big deal. But it's awesome and it's just saved me so much time and trouble having that there. So that's tip number six. And tip number seven, it might be a little bit hard to see, but it's very, very important that your number and your arrow on your blade housing faces you square on. You don't want this off to the side or over here or towards the back where you can't see it. If that happens, you're gonna get some bad cuts. Why? I do not know. I just know it to be true. So make sure that's kind of facing you nice and square on. And that's it for me. Those are my seven tips to happy cricketing. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. 
and Happy New Year.